it is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. Oh, God! Oh, Jesus Christ! Welcome back to the good, the bad, and the ugly show. So, as summer is are coming in, I guess it's time to talk about the Wicker Man. In the woods there grew a tree, and a fine, fine tree was he. The Wicker Man was a 1973 folk horror film directed by Robin Hardy. It starred Edward Woodward, Britt Eklund, Diane Salento, Ingrid Pitt, and of course, Christopher Lee. They had in mind a very unusual project. They wanted me to play one of the leads. So I went there and we chatted and talked. They weren't very specific, either of them. All that was discussed was the fact that they were going to write the part for me. It was based on the 1967 novel Ritual. So the story concerns an uptight uh, Christian detective uh, played by Edward Woodward called Sergeant Neil Howey who uh, goes over to a remote Scottish island in search of a missing girl named Rowan Morrison. I had, for quite uh, an appreciable period of time, wanted to do a film in the, for want of a better word, horror movie genre, without it actually following in the rather tired footsteps of Hammer films. It begins with him going over there in the boat, um, and you've got the, uh, he's shouting on the little Tanai thing, and um, there's some weird, sinister-looking people over there in boats. Um, I say weird, sinister-looking people, just villagers, really. I think the um, director's cut begins slightly differently from what I remember. Um, my favourite of all the versions of this is the director's cut. In fact, Christopher Lee was cited as saying that that is the real only version of the film. That's the version he liked. All sorts of scenes that I remember that we shot and were not there. So I thought, this is very strange. I, don't know, I wonder what's happened. Um, Willow McGregor. And she says, you would Willow McGregor, I have the honour to present to you Ash Buchanan. Come up, Ash Buchanan. Another sacrifice for Aphrodite, Willow. You flatter me, Your Lordship. Surely you mean to Aphrodite. I make no such distinction. You are the goddess of love in human form, and I am merely your humble acolyte. <laughs> Gently Johnny is, is in there as well, if you know that one. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, if we're talking different versions, there's the original version, there's the uh, final cut that was done recently, and uh, that has like a couple of deleted scenes in it, sort of cleaned up. But um, nah, the director's cut is really the, the definitive version for me. That's the version I watch. Even though some of the scenes look a little bit crackly, I think that just kind of adds to it. In these little movie review things, I don't give away too much about the plot and all that stuff because I want people to go and watch it. But um, it's just this. This is a, just a great film. This is close to my heart. I love this. I'm a massive fan of this film. Of course, we will talk about the the music. The music by uh, Paul Giovanni is just um, absolutely awesome. Unfortunately, he died in 1990. Uh, but you can still can go out and buy the soundtrack. So I don't know if he ever did much else, really. I don't think he really did. But the soundtrack, uh, the film wouldn't be much without the soundtrack. The soundtrack really just sort of adds and becomes the film. Um, it's all perfect. Uh, there's not a lot I can say about it, really. I listen to it regularly still. It was released um, in a few different ways. So originally, the soundtrack, from what I found, was a CD. Um, so yeah, I bought it on CD and HMV, and basically that was just kind of recorded straight from the film. So it just had all the bits of dialogue in the film. The songs, you could hear stuff from the film going on in the background, so it was literally just a rip off the movie. Um, the new soundtrack, well, the, the second soundtrack that came out, the remastered one, that had all the original master tapes, I think. They must have found them later, because uh, all the tracks on that are kind of isolated. There's a couple of bits they couldn't quite find, or a couple of bits that still have the... Uh, Noises of, noises of like the boats and stuff in the background. So um, yeah, maybe out there somewhere is a whole load of the uh, instrumental tracks that they haven't uh, 
we haven't tracked down yet. It'd be great to find the master tapes of all that stuff, like searching for Rowan and all that stuff was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, you can only get that as a kind of uh, recording straight off the film. But you get songs now like Gently Johnny and The Landlord's Daughter, you can hear the full version of that, which is just superb. I think the landlord's daughter, oh, nothing can delight so. As does the part that lies between her left toe and her right toe. <laughs> Um, I do like both versions though because there's bits of like creepy music from the film that wasn't put on the remastered one. So Anthony Schaffer, I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of these words right, maybe, maybe not, but Anthony Schaffer wrote the screenplay with Robin Hardy for the original film. Uh, he also later on worked on a screenplay for a direct sequel uh, in 1989 called The Loathsome Lampton Worm. So that would have been, this sounds terrible, so, um, so Robin Hardy had no, no intention of making this film. Uh, basically, this continues straight at the end, um, which I won't go too far into uh, into what happens there. But it, this starts straight at the end of the film and completely ruins the ending, and it leads to like battles with um, old gods and new gods, and there's some weird special effects, and the whole thing just looks and sounds absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it was made into a play eventually, and I think there's an audio play as well that was made for the radio. Um, all made by fans, but uh, yeah, I don't like the sound of it personally. Um, I don't know how. I'd love to see a kind of a decent sequel to The Wicker Man, but um, I think the time has passed too much. So uh, Christopher Lee is no longer with us, um, and a lot of the other actors aren't either. Um, so I don't really think it would work anymore. Um, there was a spiritual sequel that came out in 2011, also uh, written and directed by Robin Hardy. Um, this was called The Wicker Tree. Now, I had uh, I had quite high hopes about this film. I thought it was going to be really good. Um, it wasn't it wasn't great, not for me. Um, it was interesting. I mean, this is about um, some Americans who come over to the island. Um, they're like country stars, and um, yeah, it's it's a similar kind of storyline, but um, but not. So the characters aren't the same. It's not based on, on it's not based in the same world or the same story. Uh, Christopher Lee is also in this other film, but he's only in it for a tiny bit, and he claims that he's not playing the same character, even though it's kind of left a little bit ambiguous as to whether it's supposed to be Lord Summerall or not. Um, I think originally the intention was for this to be a sequel and something went wrong and they couldn't get Christopher Lee to be in it much so they had to kind of rearrange things and, and condense the story down but I'm not too sure if that's true or not it might not be Poor wee laddie Hunting him is a game of chance You've often said that what you believe in is the natural order of things the food chain Cruel, or benign, for you, everything under the sun happens because it just happens. That's fate. I can fate be altered. This is a question that every religion has tried to answer, and the answer is almost certainly no. But we keep trying. Um, but yeah, it was it was all right. It's a good watch. It's interesting. It's got some 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 cool singing and stuff in it, and some some weird scenes. Um, there, there's there's a scenes. Uh, I remember a scene of um, uh, the film from the Eye of a Raven or something, something weird like that. Uh, it's not a patch in the original though. And speaking of of stuff that isn't a patch, obviously there was a remake in 2006 starring Nick Cage. Now, something you couldn't really have dreamt up. Something interesting about that film is there's a scene at the beginning in the police station where there is a missing persons um, poster on the wall with a picture of Edward Woodward from the first one. So I like that, it's a funny little kind of easter egg. But the film itself is absolutely diabolically terrible and I'm not the only person in the world to say that. Um, it's a really odd remake. It's basically, they're kind of like a female um, Amish community. What? what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! I'm losing my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! And he... 
the bees. Um, I don't know much to say about this film. Go and watch it. I mean, if you're a fan of the original, you'll probably think this film is an abomination. But I kind of enjoy it because it's a, it's a silly Nicolas Cage film. It kind of takes something from the first one and kind of um, fucks it up, I guess. But yeah, interesting nevertheless. Before Robin Hardy died, he was trying to work on a third film. So it would have been a kind of weird spiritual uh, trilogy, a kind of weird spiritual trilogy. So you had The Wicker Man, The Wicker Tree. The last film was to be called The Wrath of the Gods. And that would have been yet another film uh, made in the same place, but not quite concerning the same story, but almost. Um, it got crowdfunding. It got a crowdfunding campaign that started in 2015 and then fell short of quite a large amount of money. So it just never got made. They never got round to it after the wicker tree i'm not really surprised i had high as i say i had high hopes about that they didn't quite pan out and then sadly robin hardy died so um leaving us uh one film short of a very mixed up trilogy to be honest it doesn't really matter that that film wasn't made i think maybe one day someone could go back to it but i think the wicker man is an amazing piece of its time it kind of belongs in 1973 and i don't, I don't think you could really make a film like that anymore yes i am actually quite amazed that the wicker man is still around and i suppose the greatest thing that can happen to an actor is even if just once just once in his life or her life you do something that lasts well i think the film is timeless in a way so uh that's a great warm feeling um there's amazing scenes in this film um i don't really know how to talk about it too much without giving any spoilers away i can just show clips of it really um like this scene here the fetching and plugging is his delight. Yeah, and, and stuff like this as well. <laughs> the little old beetle goes round and round, always the same way, you see, until it ends up right up tight to the nail. Poor old thing. <laughs> Poor old thing? And why in God's name do you do it, girl? Yeah, as you can see, it's, it's it's filled with atmosphere and it's absolutely amazing. And of course, the story from The Wicker Man, it, it comes down through the centuries from the original idea of, of, uh, the, of what The Wicker Man was, the history of it. I mean, this goes back to kind of like first century stuff. This is like pagan pagans and um, Celtics. The old religion, which had gone underground for many centuries after Christianity came, and that it would be fun to try and conceive of a story where the old religion had reappeared. So we searched around for a story of, of that kind. The Wicker Man is um, specifically Celtic and it is well recorded. Burnt their, their prisoners, their victims, their animals as sacrifices to the gods in huge Wicker Men. And uh, you know they, they, they built the Wicker Man. There's kind of, there's not exactly direct evidence of it, but there's, there's some evidence to their actually existing these wicker men um, they build to uh, try and bring their harvest, appease the uh, the fire, the sun god and all that stuff, uh, that guy. But um, yeah, no, the, the ideas are so cool. And I love the idea that there is an island out there that is uh, that's where they're still worshiping this stuff. I rang Tony Shaffer who was in New York. Oh, he said, it's very interesting you should have rung me because I've finished the script. What are you going to call it? And he said, the wicker, man. And I said, uh, has that got anything to do with druids and their uh, sacrifices? <laughs> and he said, I hate you. <laughs> because I was almost the only person probably who knew what the Wicker Man really represented, pagan sacrifice. And of course, um, uh, though they bring, they, they, they call upon their sacrifice to come to them. Once again, not trying to give too much away. Um, but yeah, just fantastic stuff, man. And, uh, you know, it is May Day after all. So uh, hopefully someone out there is building a wicker man um, and getting ready for this. This huge, huge celebration. Um, the stuff with the, the burning hand of the candles as well by the bed. This is all stuff that was um, kind of from folklore as well. Um, absolutely fantastic again. That's a very creepy scene. And uh, yeah, it's been used in um, pop culture. Things like Little Britain. I mean, for me, when I first saw that, people thought this scene was particularly, this character and scene particularly weird, but I knew straight away what this was. You open for afternoon tea? Ooh, maybe I am and maybe I'm not. Are you the landlord here? I, I'm Alda McGregor. 
And you must be the policeman from the mainland. It's pretty obvious. Also, the film, we'll talk about the filming locations as well. The film was, uh, was shot in and around Newton Stewart. The locations were very carefully chosen, very opposite, and I th Seamus Flannery had a large hand, obviously, in finding the locations and adapting them. We just talked about generally about locations and set the kind of settings we were looking for and the, the kind of psychic and surreal interests he had in the symbolism of Celtic mythology. So uh, Newton Stewart is a place in Scotland. Um, yeah, it's like it's basically it's what it is. It is that exact place they go to, and it looks like that apparently, or it did back then. Apparently, it still is a bit like that now. In fact, um, whilst reading um, this book here, uh, Crap Towns Returns. So um, I don't know if you know about the Crap Town books, but uh, yeah, reading through here and coming in at that number thirty-one is um, indeed uh, Newton Stewart. So um, I will read what it says in the Crap Town book about that place. This isn't um, my words understand that it's the words of these people um so yeah population of, of the place is uh 4, 000, I'll, I'll skip through that but it says known to those desperate enough to escape as mutant stewards okay the town is otherwise most famous for being one of the primary locations of the original version of the wicker man and because while filming brick etland described the place as the town that god forgot the movie required a cast of deranged-looking locals capable of being taken for pagan-worshipping, bobby-barbecuing bastards. Living here, you realise it was more documentary than fiction. Wow, okay. I'm, I bet the place is really nice. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't live there. The people who lived in the area were absolutely tremendous. I mean, they really made the movie because uh, in terms of you had to have that crowd. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. And uh, The Wicker Tree was also filmed in the same place as well. I tried to spot the locations while watching it and try and compare, but I didn't really see anything that looked too familiar, really. I guess the place has changed over the years. Um, there's a few other films sort of sort of similar to this. Um, one was The Witches, a, a Hammer film. Just had that kind of small town. There's something a bit more weirdly going on in the undercurrent. I guess this film also went on to inspire a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, Hot Fuzz, you know, uh, The Greater Good, the, the, the secret committee of the town. There's a bit of that in there as well, and probably countless other things. I mean, all those American things, like kind of like the, like the wrong turn, and the, even the Chainsaw Massacre, where the whole town is kind of in on it. Um, yeah, I like that. The, the idea of that is incredibly creepy. And um, yeah, I guess it kind of um, begins here. But um, it's a great film. I just thought we would talk about it a little bit today because, um, as I say, it's May Day. There's something in the air. Um, the summers uh, are coming in, and it's time to build a big wicker man and, and burn someone in it. That might have given away the ending. Please like, share, and subscribe to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly Show. Because there's no room left in hell. Die if you want to!